Moses Holdings, I believe, is a future case study for the best business schools in the world on how to build a world-class giant in a very short period and keep it growing. <laughs> the group is led by no only other person than my life brother, who is one of our own, the one of the past presidents of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, President NGS, that's with his support and the rest, I stand here in front of you, and I'm always proud to be associated with him. He's here to present the facts behind the offer that is bringing to the market. Ordinarily, I would say that Assets Holdings PLC does not have to broadcast why its offer is a good buy, given the ample rewards that astute investors who invested in these earlier offers have enjoyed over the years in form of regular dividends and capital appreciation. And I believe Chief Wosu and other people that are seated here today will confirm that to us. Today, Access Holdings PLC leverages this platform to communicate their strategic plans for capital raise of their 17.7 billion ordinary shares of 50 copper each on the basis of one new ordinary share for every two existing shares held at an issue price of 19 naira 75 copper per share by way of a rights issue. Today's session is pivotal particularly as we remember the profound legacy of Herbert Wigwe, the fearless one, whose visionary leadership, alongside his fellow founder, Aigbo J. Aigimokwede, has shaped not just Access Holdings, but inspired many, including myself. Their audacity and commitment to excellence has laid a foundation that continues to influence and drive our ambitions, both within and beyond the financial sector. We are not here for the short term. Like every business and every financial institution, we live our lives in quarters. Just so happens that in our view, a quarter is 25 years. So we're here for the long term. It's not about making money in the short term. It's not about showing fantastic results as a result of foreign exchange gains. We ensure we build real value. We ensure that the business that we do serves the markets and communities that we operate in. We are the largest lender in the market, largest deposit taker. And I think the conversation would have been a bit narrow if it was just in Nigeria. Across the 14 markets we operate in in the continent, 10 of them were either number one, were either were top five in 10 of them. In the other four or five, ex-South Africa, by 2027 will be a top five bank. So in some sense, we are not local champions. We are the third largest bank in Zambia. Fact. Post the closing of our standard charter transaction, we'll be the third largest bank in Sierra Leone. Third largest bank in the Gambia. Where today, post our transaction in Kenya, we'll be the largest tier two bank at about number 14, 12 or 14. In Botswana, we're number five. In Mozambique, we're number six. And in each of these markets, we are a local competitor. <laughs> the numbers from last year suggest that we continue to be the largest bank in our markets. To be, tr to be honest, and I'm not sure if I should share this, we don't wake up every day in, as a management team and the first thing we think about is how we beat a Nigerian bank. That really is not what drives us anymore. It's about the impact we can make in the continent and how can we, through the many networks that we're building, help catalyze growth, make the right impact on the continent, and of course, return significant re um, profits to our shareholders. Today, we're the largest deposit-taking bank in our market. As at end of December of 2023, we had what's about 15.3 trillion largest lender in our market with about 8.9 trillion largest total asset with about 27 trillion as at q1 for anyone who's bothered to look at our reports we grew 32 percent between q1 and december last year and closed at about 32.5 trillion the institution's sustainable growth rate is not of 30. we are the fastest growing bank in the continent fact <laughs> Over the course of the last 10 years, and this is what we've shared in all our analyst uh, reviews, 
we have been in an investment mode. And what does that entail? It's meant that we've gone to new markets. We made investment in scale, infrastructure, technology, waiting for the day that the payoff will happen. I think where we are today is that we're transiting from that investment mode to a consolidation mode. From a shareholder perspective, what does that mean? Now, maybe I back, take one step back. You know, in business school, you are told that any business that doesn't have positive MPV projects, that it should return the money to shareholders. So whilst we celebrate those who pay big dividends, understand the signal that that means. It means they have zero positive MPV projects. We've been in an investment mode and we have clearly made the bets that we want across the continent. Today we are the largest African bank in the UK. Our UK business, our UK and our international business have had many firsts. First African bank going to Malta. And that is meant to support our trade business across the world. In Malta, we'll have a booking office for trade. Now, you know when you're growing up in banking, you hear that Citibank has a booking office in Ireland. Deutsche Bank has a booking office somewhere. Uh, Commerce Bank has a booking office in London. Those are the kind of conversations we have today. So we will have our own booking office for trade in Malta. Access UK is also the first African bank in Hong Kong. It took us four years. It took us four years through COVID, Hong Kong riots, but we got there in the end. So today, our international business means that we can clear ourselves in GBP across any platform, both cash and instruments. Our Paris and Malta business means for euros, we can clear ourselves, both cash and instruments. I guess the big elephant is in the room is what about USD? Because dollar is still the most convertible currency and trade is done mostly in dollars. I don't need to say much, but you have to know that Access US is coming. A lot of people will take their offer, their right issue. It's oversubscribed, they will take it. But you must start interim dividend. That is a starting tax I'm giving you to deliver to the group. Okay. If you're sitting 50 Kobo, we'll be happy. And people will know, yes, Access keeping to their words. It should have been global and looking at the prospectus that I got because they offered open already. Uh, you are talking about branch expansion. And I think that you have been narrow in the way it was presented in the prospectus. You talk about Lagos, Portacot, and Abuja. But your presentation speaks beyond those three locations. So I'll also be hoping that uh, you, you, give a, you give some education as to why it was deliberate that what you have in the prospectus is limited to those two locations. I'm no longer a manager of businesses. Like you, I'm an owner of businesses. And there are certain things I look at when I, I, I'm either invested in a business or I'm interested in a business to invest in. If a business is on an earnings run rate, annual, of the amount I put into the business once, I must, I must eat there, eat and... Uh, do you know that's access? Because if you look at the earnings profile of Access Bank, project it, just project it, okay? And project it in Naira, don't even assume any other... Did. Anyway, because the Roosevelt doesn't like to count devaluation profit. If there's more devaluation, the thing will can double or triple. The earnings forecast, not in the... I, you do this analysis. It's about 17 Naira a share. How much are you paying for it? 1975. 17 Naira a share annually. Now, this is not a bank that needs further reinvestment to make that money. So it's not going to be seeking additional capital all right, that would dilute those earnings. So the reality is this, and why we did a rights issue, is that it would be so sad if you guys have gotten us so far, stayed with us through the thick and thin, 
through the times of investing, through the you know blood, sweat, and tears, okay, and then this uh, money making machine is about to start dropping money, and then you don't no, no. don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. Okay. Now, again in the presentation, in 2002, before, just before we, we came into um, Access Bank, you know, you remember where we used to work? All of us here. We used to work in one of the most profitable banks in Nigeria, correct? It had been one of the most profitable banks in Nigeria for 10 years, run, run way, okay? So it had been one of Nigeria's three most profitable banks for 10 years. Now, Access Bank, as you well know, was not counted. So it's interesting that not only did we, we came 10 years after here, okay, to Access Bank, we pursued, overtake. Now we're recovering, we're recovering. Then you don't want to, ah, bah, no. You have to give us, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so there is a natural adjustment. And risk management also then tells us that there should be a discipline in what we do. It's not to say that we couldn't open the coffers and stop, but it would actually seem strange to you. It would seem strange to an analyst. What are we doing? You know, you have, you know, you have to get to the point where you consolidate. And when you consolidate, you can then begin to really, really sweat you know, the assets that you've created. That is the phase that Roosevelt alluded to that we're in the phase of consolidation. And um, honestly, shareholders in Access Bank who are able to buy shares now, whether by way of rights or on the floor, honestly speaking, you are going to be okay. <laughs>